Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice problem that was suggested by one of my viewers, but not an ordinary one. This problem was suggested by Kermak and don't peek if you don't want to see the answer, but that's what the problem is and I want to do this problem because it has a very special meaning and the reason being that about three years ago, I was kind of celebrating my first anniversary. Message from him about three years ago. Thank you very much, Kermak, for all your support all these years. He's been around from the very first year, and thanks for your ongoing support. Anyways, let's get to the problem. This is a great, anyways, that's just the cake from the first anniversary again. And also, I want to thank to Black Pen, Red Pen, or BPRP Fast for his best wishes. Again, that was a while ago. Anyways, uh, I still hope to meet with him, but I, wasn't, I didn't have a chance to go visit him. Anyways, that's another story. We'll get to that later. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. I think this is a beautiful problem. And some people suggested solutions and Kermak himself too. Uh, one over Y plus one over Z equals one over Y plus Z. So this might kind of look like an innocent equation. And what does this have to do with complex numbers? You might be wondering, right? Because it, this channel is all about complex numbers, right? Wait a minute. It, what was the first year anniversary thing? Okay, that was for cyber math, my other channel. Or should I say my main channel? Or maybe my first channel. Anyways, you get the idea. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a common denominator. It's going to go as y plus z divided by yz. And we're going to set it equal to 1 over y plus z. And then we're going to cross multiply because why not? And that's going to give us y plus z squared equals yz. And now we're going to put everything on the same side. But let's go ahead and expand this first. y squared plus 2yz plus z squared equals yz. And then subtract yz, you're going to get y squared plus yz plus z squared equals 0. Pay close attention to this expression because it's going to come up again. All right, great. I call this killing two birds with one stone, right? Because there are two variables we're going to solve for y and z at the same time. How? You'll see. So first thing I want to do to this equation, because this is a homogeneous equation, and homogeneous equations come up with differential equations and so many other types of equations, and they are very special. So we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by z squared. And you could also divide by y squared. Doesn't matter. Same idea. And we're still going to get 0. Of course, z should not be 0. And since we are going to be looking at something like y over z, that's very important, right, in this case. And obviously, we know that y and z cannot be 0. And y plus z cannot be 0 either because of the original equation, right? But does that mean that y over z cannot be 0? Yes, because since y can't be 0, y over z cannot be 0. Cool. Let's go ahead and split it up into pieces. So we're going to get y squared over z squared plus yz over z squared plus z squared over z squared, which is 1 equals 0. Here you can cancel out one of the z's and you end up with something like this. At this point, it would be very meaningful and super duper meaningful to call y over z something. And I'm going to call that w because I use y and w and this time, I mean z and w, sorry, for complex number problems, uh, especially on this channel. But why, why did I use y? Because I wanted to stick to the original idea. Okay, anyways. So we have the following w squared plus w plus 1 equals 0. And this is an amazing, amazing equation. And this is quadratic. Yay, my favorite. So how do you solve this problem? One method would be using the quadratic formula. And then I'll show you something else, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and solve it. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 minus 4. That's a negative 3 that basically turns into the square root of 3 times i in the complex world, and that whole thing divided by 2. So w, there are two solutions, right? 
we can do it this way, or a big, huge or, we could do this. Write the quadratic and make it cubic. Why? Because if you multiply both sides by w minus 1, you get what is called difference of two cubes. And it just turns into something amazing. w cubed minus 1, if you don't believe that, go ahead and distribute, equals 0, which means w cubed equals 1. And you might be thinking, okay, doesn't this imply w equals 1? But if I plug in w equals 1, here in the original equation, uh-oh, it doesn't work. Because it doesn't work, it's not a solution. Why, wait a minute, if w equals 1, then doesn't that mean w cubed equals 1? Yes, but the converse is not true all the time. If w cubed equals 1, w doesn't have to be 1. And in this case, it shouldn't be 1 because we introduced an extraneous solution. You have to be careful. So you kind of have to take note. Okay, w cubed equals 1, but w does not equal 1. Make sense? Under those conditions, let's proceed. We got w cubed equals 1. So we're going to be finding the cube roots of unity in other words. Well, what do I mean by that? If you remember, we talked about these in my lecture videos. Go ahead and check them out if you haven't done so or if you're not familiar with complex numbers. In the complex world, I can write 1 as e to the power 2 pi ni, where n is an integer. This is basically the complexification. I, could, I guess we could write an article about that, right? It would sound very sophisticated. Complexification of 1 in the complex world. So if you raise both sides to the power 1 third, you're going to get something that looks like this. But n cannot equal 0 because that would give us w equals 1, which is not allowed for obvious reasons, right? So n can be 1, though. If n is equal to 1, I'm going to get, let's say, w1. My first solution is going to be e to the power 2 pi i over 3. And that is the same thing as cosine 2 pi over 3 plus i times sine 2 pi over 3, thanks to Euler. Euler is amazing. Some people say Gauss is better, but I think Euler is better. Anyways, you can discuss in the comment section down below if you want. That's what I'm thinking. And the second solution is going to come from n equals 2, and that gives us 4 pi i over 3. And then we're going to be replacing these with their values so that we can kind of write our numbers in standard form, a plus b i form, right? So w1 is going to be basically negative 1 half plus root 3 over 2i, and w2 is just going to be negative 1 half minus root 3 over 2i. In other words, they're going to be conjugates. They're not opposites. Be careful. We're not talking about the square roots of a complex number, in which case they would be opposites, but these are two of the cube roots of a complex number. Which one is excluded? w3 equals 1 because... I mean, you know it, right? Why? <laughs> Come on. So, but this is just W. What is W? I don't know W. I know Y and Z. So let's go ahead and convert this. So we said that W is equal to Y over Z. So now Y over Z is negative 1 half plus root 3 over 2I, or W over Z is equal to negative 1 half minus root 3 over 2I. Let's go ahead and uh, materialize this a little bit more. For example, if z is equal to 1, in other words, let's go ahead and look at specific cases, then we're going to get two possible solutions. y is going to be negative 1 half plus root 3 over 2i, or y equals negative 1 half minus root 3 over 2i. Of course, z equals 1 is a very simple case, but one thing that I want you to think about at this point, what do y and z have in common? Let's go ahead and talk about this for about a minute maybe, and then we'll finish up. So hang in there. w cubed equals 1. That's what we found, right? And this implies y over z cubed equals 1. And then from here, w cubed equals z cubed, but w, I mean, sorry, y cubed equals z cubed, but y does not equal z. You get the idea? In other words, we find two complex numbers, two different complex numbers whose cubes are equal. You could also go from here, y squared plus yz, plus z squared equals root. Remember, that was the equation we got after, uh, you know, cross multiplication. And then you could just go ahead and multiply both sides by y minus z. And then that's going to give you the difference of two cubes with two variables this time. And ta-da, you're going to get y cubed equals z cubed again. And this will give you y equals 
W1Z or W2Z, where W is a cube root of unity. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.